So what does all this mean for the U.S. economy? Joining us now with his analysis, Simon Johnson. He's former chief economist at the International Monetary Fund and currently a professor of economics at MIT. Simon, so good to see you again. Thanks for having me. So, Simon, you heard what President Obama said just a moment ago on our program, that uh, this whole crisis set our economy back. Do you agree with that? And if so, what's it going to take? How long is it going to take for the economy to bounce back? Well, unfortunately, I, I agree completely. The amount of uncertainty that was created uh, will turn out to depress growth, reduce job creation, not just this quarter, but I fear also for the first quarter of next year. So, Simon, let me talk a little bit about, about the international response that uh, Michelle Cruz Cabrera was just talking about, China being one but only one player in the uh, inter world of international finance. Last night, Mohamed El Arian of PIMCO said that if we keep doing this kind of uh, lurching from crisis to crisis, eventually other countries, other players are going to build pipes around us. Do you agree with that? Well, I certainly agree um, with, with Mohammed that uh, investors around the world are looking with some shock and horror at our political behavior uh, over the past uh, week or so. And it is absolutely in the interest of, of China to develop a large, robust, offshore renminbi market. And the British this week came out and said they'd be happy to help the Chinese do that in, in London. So to be sure, we should expect people to diversify away from the dollar, in part because we have demonstrated repeated irresponsibility and, and, and given every indication that we're going to go even further in, in a crazy direction early next year. Well, our economy, our businesses depend on the mighty American dollar. What are you saying exactly for the future? Well, obviously, in, in the short term, the dollar remains the primary reserve currency and an outstanding safe haven, believe it or not, uh, around the world. The question is, what happens one, two, five years down the road? How quickly can portfolios shift? How fast does the euro rebound or, or, or the renminbi rise as a viable alternative to the dollar? The pressure is there. We, we should recognize that it's no, we have no birthright that, that, that uh, says the dollar is number one currency forever. Uh, we've built up that reputation, good reputation, for over a long period of time, 200 years, I would argue. And, and we've squandered it over what? two, three, five years, it's, it's really appalling. You know, as we look uh, now back on this uh, debt crisis going up against the debt ceiling for the now second time in little more than two years, I wonder if you feel that at some point, if we run headlong once again towards this cliff, uh, that at some point we're going to slip and actually go through that debt ceiling and, and have, uh, either in technical terms or real terms, a default. Do you think that's, that's going to happen? Yes, uh, absolutely. Look, the, the, the games that have been played are, are playing with fire. It's extremely dangerous. You, you, you don't want to pretend or say or even perhaps mean to go up to a debt default situation or go beyond that and see what happens. That is not how reasonable countries behave. And if we continue to have this kind of absolutely pointless confrontation over the debt ceiling, for example, but also the government shutdown. What did that accomplish? Nothing except us make us look unstable in the eyes of our own consumers, our own investors, and of course, everyone around the world. Simon, here's another what if question. During this whole crisis, there were a lot of warnings that the U.S. economy could slip into recession. What about now? Are we still at risk of a recession or are we in the clear? Well, I don't think this is going to precipitate a recession, but for sure we lose perhaps half a percentage point of growth in the fourth quarter. I would worry much more about the beginning of next year. If we have a confrontation in January, February, March, or all of the above, that will really hurt us. And depending on what's going on around the world, I would not be optimistic about our growth prospects. All right. Sorry to leave it on such a downbeat note, but we have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Simon. Simon Johnson, professor of economics at MIT.